Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we're going to take this shot and we're going to add some particles over the top to create kind of cold air. Now, you may remember many years ago, Andrew Kramer did something similar to this on his channel. Um, he used After Effects. We're going to use the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. OK, so we're on the Edit page and I've got a clip here. Uh, my wife is doing her very best to pretend that it's cold. So uh, there'll be a link to this clip in the description. Um, I'll right click on it and then we will select a new Fusion clip and then go over to the Fusion tab. OK, so on the Fusion tab and the first thing we'll do is set up our fast noise to use it as our particle. So let's grab a fast noise from our toolbar here and I want to see the fast noise and our media out together so that's just click here on these two viewers we'll drag our fast noise into the left viewer and then we've got meter out on the right viewer let's also open the inspector so with our fast noise selected let's just zoom out a bit here so we can see what's going on so with our fast noise here selected let's change some of these settings the detail I'm going to take up to 10 this is the maximum that you can set the detail to and I will change the contrast to 2.5 and I'll leave the brightness. I'm going to drop the scale down to 1 and I'm going to put the seethe rate up and then I'm going to select discontinuous. Um, so what we'll do now is actually we'll change because at the moment it's set to full HD and we don't need each particle to be full HD because they're only going to be appearing quite small. So go to image, uncheck auto resolution and then we'll actually make this like 100 by 100 because it really doesn't need to be that big and all you're going to do is use more resources what we also need to do is move our fast noise so that it doesn't go outside this square um, otherwise each particle is going to have a box around it which we don't want we will add a gradient and so here I've just gone to color gradient change gradient type to radial and then we're going to alter these values so this first little triangle click on the triangle click in this box and then i'll make it white the second triangle here click on it click in the box and make it black so now we're seeing our particles on a black background but again we've got this box around them so if i play this now you can see that the actual fast noise goes out of this box, which means when we use it as a particle, it will be cut off. So we need to change it and we're going to use this start and end point. So grab the start here and move it to the middle. Grab our end and then we'll kind of move it around the side. And we just need to look to make sure that none of the fast noise goes outside the box because we don't want it to be cut off. OK, I think that looks all right. So something like that. OK, so let's just play it and we can see it's changing each time. That's the seethe rate, which is making it change. And so every time there's a new particle, the emitter will use a new iteration of this fast noise based on the seethe value. What we also need to do here in the inspector is to remove the black background. So click here on the triangle and then choose the black color and reduce the alpha to zero. If we don't do this, then each particle will have a black background. OK, so let's now add some more nodes. And we'll go back to a single window and just move this up. So what we want to add here is our particle system. So here on the toolbar, we'll grab a P emitter. We will then also grab a P render. And then we will also grab a render a 3D. So we're going to use this 3D particle system. So this render a 3D will allow us then to merge it into our 2D setup here. So let's base plug these in. So we'll plug our emitter into our renderer and our renderer into our render a 3D. Then we can grab this output of our render a 3D and drop it over our media in, which gives us a merge. And so now we have some particles. So we can see those here, this kind of white snowball. But we want to use our fast noise as our particle. At the moment, there's nowhere to put it. 
So we need to go up here, click on, on the, make sure you've got emitter selected and go to style and change point to bitmap, change animate to particle birth time. And now you can see that the P emitter has an input. So now we can grab the output of this and put it in here. Now we're using our fast noise as our particle. So we can just have a little look at this and you'll see that the particles are just appearing on top of each other. So right now it's just a growing snowball because we need to change some of the settings in the emitter, like the velocity, the number and the size of the particles. And we can also add some randomness as well. So let's go to controls. First of all, let's change the number. Now 10 is quite a lot and it's just going to slow down the computer. So I'm going to change this to 0.8 and the lifespan, I'm going to drop it slightly to 90 and then let's go to the velocity and we need some movement here. So we're just going to add maybe a six here. So we've got 0 0.06. Let's just have a look at that. So now we have some movement on our particles. Okay. Um, and maybe let's make them slightly faster. Let's maybe say 0.9. So how's that? All right, not too bad, but they're going the wrong way. So to change that, we can go to angle and then we'll just change it by writing 180, which will make it go the other way. So now they're coming this way, but it doesn't look much like cold breath at the moment. So we need to change a few other things. So let's go to style and we will go here to size controls. At the moment, the size is only 0.1, which is very small. So I think we can change this. Let's maybe let's increase it to 1.6 and now it's massive. So she's now being engulfed by a big cloud. Um, but what we can then do is use this size over life to determine how big it is when it starts, how big it is when it ends. So I'm just going to drop this down at the beginning, somewhere like this, and then drop the end down somewhere like this. And then let's look at that. Okay, so we're starting to get somewhere. Um, but if you notice when I play it back again, when you see them come on, they just kind of switch on and then they just switch off. So they're kind of just appearing and disappearing. So we want to add like a feather to each end. So they gradually disappear. And to do that, we can use the fade control here. And we don't need much. So here, for example, maybe I'll add a point two and then we can look and see what that's done. So it's now just subtly faded. So they're not popping on, they're still popping off. So that's add something to the end as well, 0.7, and look at that. Okay, so that's much better. Now things are starting to look um, a bit better for us. Um, so what else can we change? Well, we can change our brightness because I think it's a bit too bright. Um, and maybe we can also change our opacity. So let's change the brightness first. So we'll go to fast noise and we'll add a brightness and contrast here. And then we'll just drop our gain down slightly. Okay. So I'm just dropping it to, what should we say, 0.9 maybe. And then after our render of 3D, I'm going to add a transform. So with our renderer 3D selected, click on transform. And after transform, I'm going to add another brightness and contrast. And with this second brightness and contrast, I'm going to use it as an opacity slider. So at the moment, if you adjust the gain, then it's actually taking it down to like a black value. Okay. So if that's what you, if you wanted like black, cold breath, maybe somebody works in a mine, then, uh, then that's possible, but we don't want that. Um, so if you select RGB and A, then we can use this as transparency. So now we can see some of the background through it. So it's starting to look a little bit better now. Um, let's maybe change the angle so we can use our transform that we've just added to change our angle and position. And so let's go to angle here, tilt it down, maybe 
let's tilt it down a bit more and maybe try and make sure it's not directly on her face but a bit away from there let's just look at that see if that works okay let's zoom in a bit actually okay maybe we need to make it slightly further away somewhere here okay that's not too bad i'm happy with the the way that looks basically we don't want it to be right next to her mouth we want there to be a small gap because if you breathe out warm air into cold air then it's not going to be visible right away okay what other changes can we make to improve our cold breath we can maybe tweak the settings in the fast noise or the emitter. But actually what we can also do is add a turbulence. So after our emitter, we can type in, we'll do shift and space. We can type in P turbulence. Let's add that. And the turbulence is basically going to add a bit of randomness to these particles, throw them in different directions to make it a little bit more kind of randomize um let's maybe change this one 0.2 maybe this one's 0.15 what's that done all right so it's kind of dissipating in different directions now which i think looks better um right but now it's on all the time so she's puffing like a steam engine um we need to look at the breaths and have it only come on when she's breathing out so the first breath starts around frame 25. So with our P emitter selected, go to the controls and we will keyframe the number here. So at frame 25, we are saying we want the full number of 0.8. So let's add a keyframe. And then I will go back one frame, frame 24, and drop it to zero. And if we then look at it, it then starts but then we want it to fade off again okay so we'll go to frame 70 and frame 70 we will drop it back to zero so now it's going to come on and then just fade away again before the next one then comes on okay so the next breath is 105 so again on frame 105 we want our number to be 0.8 then we will again go one frame back, take it down to zero. And then I'm just going to go to the end here and put it back to zero. So let's look at that. So the first breath dissipates, then the second breath comes in as well. Um, okay, I'm just going to adjust here. So I, I turned on the, the change the timeline resolution. I'll just put it to full again because my system's not super fast. I'm using an Intel MacBook Pro. Um, so if we do it like this, then we can see it a bit more clearly. So it goes off. Maybe that's, there we go, it's cached it now. So that comes on, yeah, and then it dissipates, and then the second one comes on. Um, now, when looking at this, it kind of, she's sharper than the, uh, the breath here. So I'm going to add a little bit of sharpness. I'm just going to add a sharpen and so default sharpen here and we'll leave it at one so it's just going to add a little tiny bit of sharpening but not ott just so that um, it's not too soft okay so it comes on dissipates and then goes away and then the second breath comes on so what things could we change here if we wanted to change our look um, so I'm happy with how it looks at the moment. Um, we could go back to our fast noise and we could change in noise on the noise tab here. We can't change the detail because that's as high as it goes. We could maybe change our contrast. And what the contrast does is kind of breaks things up a bit. So it's going to like add some kind of space between these particles like this. So... I think it's probably too much, maybe like that. So maybe we could just go something like 2.7, halfway between, see what that's like. 
Um, and again, probably it's a bit, so I'm, I'll go back to 2.5 and, but that's something you could adjust depending on the effect you want. Um, something else you could change here is the scale. So if you change the scale here, then you can get all sorts of weird things happening. But then this would just be very weird, um, cold breath really. Um, so this is something you know, like when you're using, you can use fast noise for so many different things that it's quite versatile when you just need to change a few settings really. The emitter, we could play with the number here. We could play with the velocity. So if we maybe change this to two and now we'll get particles flying out. So she's like, you can't even see them. They're going so quickly. Um, you can also play with uh, in the style. You could play with the size. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways you can change the look when you're using particles and this fast noise. Um, but here I think it's looking OK. And so I think we'll leave it there. So let's go back to our edit tab here. We'll just wait for it to render. So there we have it, there's the final one. So she breathes out, it dissipates, and she breathes out again, and then it dissipates. And as I said before, you can make changes um, to your taste. So what have you learned in this tutorial? Well, we've used a fast noise to create our particle. We've then added our fast noise to our particle emitter. We've added a turbulence, and we've adjusted all these values to get our desired result. Okay, that's it. I hope it was useful and I will see you in the next tutorial.